Tim DeGale is in London for the Olympics and uh, joins us now. Tim, lots of drama today. In fact, uh, uh, Jen, a lot of drama in the track and fields this morning because there's been more Olympic pain for uh, the Chinese icon, Yu Xiang, after he crashed out very dramatic style in the opening round of the 110-meter uh, hurdles this morning. He hit the first hurdle with his left leading leg and then crashed to the floor. The 29-year-old had been battling problems uh, with his back and his foot recently. And uh, at the Beijing Olympic Games, if you recall, four years ago, his dreams of winning gold in front of his home crowd also ended prematurely. And what about this? Usain Bolt wearing the red shirt of Manchester United. Well, only if player Rio Ferdinand has his way. He apparently broached the idea to Bolt in a message on Twitter and said he would speak to the boss about it. The boss, of course, being the Red Devils manager, Sir Alex Ferguson. Bolt said he would welcome this opportunity. Jen? And Tim, we understand you have a special guest with you today. Yep, a very special tall guest with us today, very familiar with all our viewers. Ollie Barrett, our London uh, correspondent, joining me here uh, at Wembley Stadium. So, Ollie, how has it been? Uh, it's almost two weeks. Uh, has it been disruptive, the Olympic Games, for locals like yourself? It has been less disruptive, I think, than many people feared. I mean, the tube is carrying more passengers than it ever has done before, and it most of the time is running okay but what we're seeing is that passenger numbers are really high obviously out by the Olympic Park out by the venues and so for many people going to and from work they're finding seats on trains for the first time in living memory um, and you know there's quite a lot of room around so I think actually it's been less disruptive than people feared and, and Londoners have partly because of that really got into the party atmosphere of the games okay here's what I want to know though summer Olympic Games is this summer in London or has it been colder than usual or wetter than usual it could have been a lot worse let's put it that way okay <laughs> it's um, you know the rain has mostly held off it hasn't been that hot but London's not really built for being particularly hot so many people will see it as a blessing in disguise that it hasn't been you know heading up towards 30 degrees centigrade every day the sun's been out every now and again you can't ask for much more than that in London <laughs> all right well any surprises that uh, team Great Britain is doing so well third in the medal standings I believe they've already equaled their showing in Beijing four years ago I think people expected Britain to do well. You know, their hosts, they have this amazing support behind them. The Olympic Stadium is full uh, of a very partisan crowd. But I think Team GB is exceeding expectations. A lot of money has been invested in the team over recent years. That was evidenced in Beijing when they did so well. But I think, you know, even Team GB's wildest dreams are on the way to being exceeded. If they pick up a few more medals here and there, uh, then everyone will be very, very happy indeed. And Saturday night, I know you were in the Olympic Stadium when they won three golds in about in 40 hour, minutes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, that's being hailed as one of the best nights in British sporting history. It was history. electrifying. I was glad I'm there. All right, let's have a look at, uh, thank you, by the way, for joining me here, Ali. Let's have a look at the uh, medal standing so far uh, right now. And China is still on top, 64 medals for China there. 31 of them gold, the United States not far behind, and Team Great Britain in third place, their best showing so far. And Jen, that's all for me here in London. All right, warm well, thanks to Timothy Gilder and uh, Oliver there in London.